guys. <laughs> um, hi, you guys. Today is Monday, January 29th. My name is Laura, and I am the founder, owner, mind behind Back Porch Fiber Co. And um, I just wanted to give you guys a little update on the dishcloth make along, pick another winner because I have finished another dishcloth and also share with you guys what I'm gonna be doing next for February. Um, let me take just a second to introduce myself because I know that there are so many new people out there. So my name is Laura. I have three kiddos and a husband, two dogs, and seven chickens. And um, I live in Northern California where I, um, I homeschool our last kiddo in grade school. And I have a small business that is Back Porch Fiber Co. My, um, if you wanna check out my business, it is on Etsy and there's a link in the show notes below. Just click on that description and, or if you're on your phone, it might say like more um, with the description, you can just click on that. Um, if you aren't a subscriber, please, 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 it helps me out so much if you subscribe to my channel and um, also turn on your notifications for this channel. If you like what you see here, always please give me a thumbs up. That also really helps too. Those are ways that cost you nothing, but really help to support me. Um, if you want to check out my shop, you can, um, again, click the link below. I have what I sell in my shop is all kinds of knitting and crochet fiber related notions. I sell scissors and um, retractable tape measures, progress keepers, stitch markers, needle stoppers, all kinds of stuff, fun stuff. I even um, create uh, project bags like you can see behind me here. Um, so yeah, go check out my shop. I also have a website that is a little bit under construction, but there is a free pattern there. So it is up and running. It is just not complete. It's still in the beginning stages, but um, there is a free pattern over there. It is called the Genesis Sock Pattern. It's a pattern that I created for my mother-in-law and it was such a fun pattern. It's kind of just a recipe. It's just a seed stitch. I just didn't want to, I didn't feel like it was one that I wanted, wanted to charge for. So over on my website, backporchfiberco.com, you can download that for free. Um, it is not in my Etsy shop because unfortunately Etsy will not allow me to have a free item there, which makes sense. It's their platform and that's how they make money is when I sell things. So but also if you're new here, please like introduce yourself below. I would love to get to know you guys. I absolutely love interacting with my audience. I love this community, which is why I do this. Um, it is so fun to see what you guys are making, see um, how what I'm making inspires you and then what you guys are making inspires me. I love that about this community and that's kind of why I do this. So um, yeah, let's kind of jump in. I had a phenomenal weekend away in the Santa Cruz and it's a few hours away from us or a couple hours away from us, but um, it was just such a nice, relaxing couple of days. Um, it was just a time for rest and reflection and um, just some, some deep thoughts. But while I was there, I got to take some walks um, up along the coastline and there was a youth surf competition. It was so fun to watch, you guys. Like, I'll put whatever footage I have, I can't remember what I videoed and what I just took still pictures of, but it was so fun. Um, and like these, all these people are just like getting in the water, out of the water. And I live on the West Coast of the United States or like near the West Coast, right? So Santa Cruz is cold water. It's the Pacific Ocean. It's from what I understand, the Atlantic Ocean is quite a bit warmer. This is cold water. We're, we're more Northern California. So Southern California, like LA, um, San Diego, water is warmer down there. But where I'm at, it's quite chilly. So, um, you know, most people are in wetsuits and whatnot, but that's just not my cup of tea. I mean, yesterday morning I got to walk, walk down this wharf area and um, I saw so many sea lions and they're talking and you see like some kind of fighting. I did get some, some footage of the sea lions that I'll put into. <laughs> um, you're seeing, like I saw these 
swimmers that are like swimming out to, I don't even know what, I don't know if there's a boat out there or what, I don't know where they're swimming to, but it was amazing. And they have like these orange buoys on them so that they're easy to see in case they need help or distress or whatever. But it's fascinating. Like the coastal life to me is so fun. I don't know. Anyway, so got a little bit of time away and just, I feel so good. <laughs> so if you ever have the chance just to get away and like, I just did one night to keep it cheap, but I like started it Saturday morning. I left about 7.30 in the morning and then I got back about 7.30 last night. So I just stayed the one night, but it was like almost two days. It was amazing. Anyways. Okay. Hold on. Let me take a drink here. I'm just having some decaf iced coffee that I made at home. I started putting cinnamon in my coffee. So it's maple syrup and cinnamon is how I sweeten it with maple syrup. The cinnamon is supposed to be like one of those mega superfoods for our bodies. I'm learning about all of this stuff. Like it balances all this like hormones and like how our body processes fats and all, it's amazing. So you're like, just add a pinch of cinnamon to your coffee. Okay, I can do that, it's delicious. Okay, so you can see behind me everything here that I have that I want to talk about. Look at this new little plant. This is a ZZ plant. I've been wanting a ZZ plant for a very long time. Isn't that so cute? I got this while I was in Santa Cruz. It's my little souvenir. I didn't even go to, I didn't go to any yarn shops while I was there. I don't know, I went to one before and they just weren't that friendly and I really don't need yarn. I love supporting local yarn shops, but I was actually gonna go to one in um, San Jose on my way home called The Fillery. That one looked really fun, but I didn't make it there in time. They closed at five and I was driving through that area about 5.30, so. It's all right, I'll have to go again. <laughs> okay, so let's get moving on here. Let's talk about some finished objects. And I have three, one you will have seen before, but I just wanted to show you because they're dishcloths and all of that. So anyways, okay. First finished object is a pair of vanilla socks. These are, um, I believe that this is a sport weight yarn. It didn't have a tag. It's one that I over dyed. I had dyed this green yarn for a sweater that I had done that I had was test knitting for. And um, during the test knit, the designer called for eight skeins of yarn. And, and that's why I think that this is DK weight yarn, but it's acting a lot like sport weight. So I don't know, but um. So I am like, okay, well, gosh, eight skeins of yarn seems really like a lot, but I, um, I trusted what she said. And so I dyed up eight skeins of yarn and it took like four. <laughs> so I don't know, but, um, so I over dyed it, adding like some navy blues in there. And then I gave like one to my stepmom, one to my friend and kept one for myself. So this was like all caked up in 250 gram skeins and so I just went for it. These are for my father-in-law. They, it is my Hello Old Sport um, sock pattern. It's just a vanilla sport weight sock pattern. Um, for these I cast on 56 stitches. I did 25 rows for the cuff, a shadow wrap heel, and a rounded toe. And I did these on US 9 1.5. And that's why I think that this is probably a sport weight yarn, but I'm not sure. Again, I don't know, but they do act like a sport weight. So, and they knit up really great with a 1.5 millimeter needle. So I would normally do a size two. And I think that that's what the pattern calls for is a size two. But um, the reason that I did a 1.5 is because when I knit with a nine inch circular needle, my gauge is a little bit looser. So I typically will go down a needle size. I didn't want to do a size one, with a sport almost DK weight yarn. I just thought that might be a little bit too tough on my hand. So that's why I did a 1.5, US 1.5. So that's my first finished object. Okay, so the next one, 
You've already seen this. This is the broken rib washcloth. And that's out of the book here, the Easy Knit Dishcloths, using the Hobby, uh, or Hobby Rainbow Yarn. It's a cotton 8-4 cotton yarn. And then this one, I don't think you guys have seen. This is a crocheted dishcloth. And that came out of this Easy Crochet Dishcloth um, book. And this is the Shooting Star um, pattern. So I, these are, um, these books here are what I'm using for the dishcloth make along in case this is your first time here. Um, these are not my published books whatsoever, but I just am really enjoying them. And I chose these books because I had them on my shelf and I kept walking past them and thinking, oh, I need to use that, I need to use that, I need to pick a pattern out. So I just did it. Like I just like pulled it off, I'm like that's it, we're doing a make along and this is what we're doing. Um, so this one knit up pretty quick. It's a little bit bigger than this one here, but, um, I kind of was hoping that they would be the same size, but that's okay. Like, I don't mind either way, but they're, yeah, I like them. I'm intentionally making them a little bit big. I know a lot of you guys make your dishcloths around seven, eight inches. These are closer to 10, 11 inches. And I'm doing that because I want them to be absorbent. I'm my idea is that I would love to replace a lot of the paper towels that we use and um, use dishcloths instead. So that is why I am making them a little bit bigger and just following following the pattern, but you could very easily modify the patterns if you wanted something smaller or even bigger. And she kind of tells you how to do that in these books. Oh, so I have both of these finished and because I finished another dishcloth, I wanted to do a giveaway and I'm gonna do that near the end. So stick around. Okay, that's it for finished objects. Um, yeah, I've been working a ton. You guys have been definitely keeping me on my toes and which is amazing. I love it, love, love it. But um, I just had a Valentine update and there's still plenty of things in the shop, you guys. So if you um, didn't know that there is a Valentine update in my shop, I'll put a link below straight to the Valentine's Day update. Um, so it'll be the all of the listings in that update on my Etsy shop. But you can also go anywhere else on, on the, like you can navigate anywhere else, but that way it'll be just an easy link to follow for that. So, um, okay. Let's go into like what I'm working on. It's a couple things. So I needed a vanilla sock to work on because when I read, I can work on a vanilla recipe. So I pulled out some stash yarn. This here is a um, Felici, I think it's called something punch, sucker punch maybe. But it's a super fun, like bright rainbowy kind of thing. Super, super cute and I am, just doing a vanilla sock. So I cast on 56 stitches. I'm using a US zeros. Normally would use a US one if I'm doing a magic loop or DPNs, but because I'm doing a nine inch circular, I have US zeros. And then I did a two by two cuff for 25 rounds. And then I'm just knitting in stocking it. And I'm just like, I just made it around to my beginning and I'm gonna try to match up the second sock, but I'm not overly concerned if it's not exact, but anyways. So working on that and I cast this on on Friday night so that I could take it with me to Santa Cruz. And so that's, I had like up until this little green line. So I didn't really have like a ton of working time on it, but like this green line is where I um, started on my trip. So there's that. Oh, guys, look at what's in here. These are some little leftover needle stoppers from my Valentine update. I'm so excited that there were some left over for me. And there are still some of those left in the shop. So what I mean by leftovers is there was not enough to um, have a complete set. So I snagged the leftovers. 
and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I love a product, but typically a lot of my items, like especially for updates, are limited quantities, and so I want to give all of those to you guys, so I don't always keep something, but... All right, so I have that. The other thing that I am working on, and this is, I think that this is gonna be kind of a scrappy project with my dishcloth yarns. So this is, and it is a little bit thin. Maybe I'll start over and do a US size two, but this is going to be like a face round. I feel like I've found a fun pattern to try. When I first started this, I was not very good at reading the instructions and I will put the link to the pattern below. It's a free pattern. Apparently it's a very old pattern that has been around for a long time. And um, so nobody is gonna like create this pattern and then sell it basically. But yeah, so I am, I'm right there. My stitches look very, very loose up here, kind of like this. Um, and that's because these are all like, or like you've turned basically. So it's like you do short rows, but you don't do a wrap and turn or um, like a double stitch or anything like that. You just turn, which then creates this, these holes. And so this designer has like, is intentionally doing that like these here. So it's kind of it's kind of fun but yeah so this might be more of like a scrappy kind of dishcloth like more of like a face wipe but I feel like that's a pretty good size um, and it'll be a little bit smaller if I use a size 2 so I might just take this out and do a size 2 but I wanted to share that with you guys because I have been on the hunt for a um, like a round face cloth like small little um, dish face cloth, face cloth. There you go. Okay. All right. Let's see. How about an advent update? Um, I am working through day six and I have currently, I am 19 stitches shy before I start the straight section of this. And so how this works without taking this off my needles is um so it's a wrap it's like a blanket wrap is what it's called so i've i start here and i've increased 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 just on one side until you get to a certain number of stitches and i'm just not going to say because it is a paid for pattern um and then you uh you knit straight like where like your back would be so you knit straight for a bit and then you decrease again and so I chose to use my Advent yarn with this and it is a fade. So it'll fade from one side to the next, which I think will be so beautiful. I'm really excited about it, um, but I'm holding it double. I'm holding my yarn double. It's for a DK weight pattern. Um, I am using Chow Gu um, US 7s on these here, on this. So, um, Let's see my next color. I've already opened all of these. so like I know what the next color is, but yeah. This will be the next color. It's gorgeous. All right, there's dogs outside barking away. Could be the mail. I don't know. I am expecting a fun package. So if it comes before this is over, I will share it with you guys. But um, yeah, kind of like, I'm enjoying this project, so I'm not in a hurry to get it done. And it is a stockinette project. I like, well, it's a garter stitch so, or garter, garter project. So it is just knitting, but there is some increasing and slipping and different things. So I'm, I can read while I am working on this, but it's not as easy, I guess. But I like the, um, the thickness of the yarn and the needles. So, okay, another project. I haven't showed this one in a while, you guys, but I started working on it again. So this, let's see, okay, this is my first, I'll show you. So this is the Alignment Throw by Margaret from Heidi and Lana. So this is my first panel. And these are like the inside panels. I think this is like the middle panel, I think. Um, is it? Yeah, because I think like on the ends, I think maybe you slip stitches or something. I don't know. But anyway, so that's one. 
And then this is my second one. So they will go like, and I feel like my gauge is a little bit different, I guess, like from project to project, but this is essentially how it's gonna go. And I think it'll be fine once I kind of block them together and like sew them and everything. I think it'll be totally fine, but I don't know, I guess people like, see, look at like, I'm not weird. I don't know, like I, I thought that I was like really, really off and I don't know. So I'm just like kind of trying to find like, yeah, I don't know. It's so weird, but like I am off somewhere, somehow, somewhere. I don't know. Anyways, it'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> okay. So the, I'm doing, I'm using all, um, for all my crosses, I'm using all Heidi and Lana yarn. Um, I am a part of her Patreon. And so these are her Patreon minis. And I'm holding them double. The pattern calls for um, 25 grams of fingering weight yarn or DK weight yarn in this case. And I, all of her minis come in um, 20 grams. So like her, her Patreon minis are 20 grams. So, um, gosh, I feel so distracted. <laughs> Anyways, so I've modified um, this blanket a little bit from her original pattern. And again, it's a paid for pattern, so I'm not gonna give specifics, but how I modified it is I did one less of everything. So, um, you know, when you're doing your stitches across here, she gives you a certain number for each section and I did one less in each section. I did one less repeat here, one less repeat here, one less repeat here. And, um, that seemed to be to work great for me for the 20 grams and I typically like I have stuff left over so it's working out well and then I'm just using a DK weight bare yarn that I have left over from when I used to dye yarn so my goal on that I'm showing this because I did finish another strip but my goal is to do two crosses a month and um that should definitely get me done by the end of the year, which would be so great. And it's a really great project to work on. It's fun to work on. There's a little bit of, um, like it's intarsia knitting and it's like, it's enough interest to not just be like a stockinette project or a garter stitch project, but it's super easy um, to where it kind of feels like that too. And the intarsia part of it is like basically every other section. So you work through a section and just by the time you're like, hey, I'm done with this intarsia knitting, then it's time for a solid color and you're good to go again. So yeah, it's pretty fun. All right, so I'm working on that. <gasps> Let's work. Let me show you guys my sweater. So this is the Pink Fizz sweater by Andrea Mowry. I showed this a while ago. It's something that I um, I started before the holiday season and just had to put it down and not even really think about it while I was doing Vlogmas and Advent knitting and all of that. So this is, but I picked it back up. This is where I'm at. I have like one and a half repeats of the chart left, I think. Like, yeah, I think the chart is maybe like 70 rows or something. And I think I have, so not one and a half. Let's see. I've done, I think I have three fourths of, of a chart left basically, but I'm really loving this. I am intentionally knitting it oversize. Um, I cannot remember the size that I'm doing, but I feel like every single time I try to make an oversized, like sweatshirt, bougie sweatshirt kind of project, it just never quite turns out. It is always tighter than what I think it is. 
now. I went like bigger than what I thought I needed on this and I think it's, I think it's going to do the trick. So pretty excited about that. Um, but I'm, like I said, maybe, uh, 40 to 50 rows maybe before I split for the sleeves. So super excited about that. The yarn that I'm using here, oh, I don't even have it in here. I'll put all the info below, but this is it. It's a beautiful, beautiful, like sport weight yarn. Yeah, it's like, it's a wooly wool, but not too itchy. Okay, you guys, I'll put a picture of this here, but total side note, when I was, um, I went to a thrift store while I was in Santa Cruz, there was a hand knit sweater. And I, I am almost positive that it was like a wool linen blend. Like if you've ever knit with something linen, um, like the Pearl Soho um, linen quill is kind of a good example of this, but you'll see like little, like white kind of, almost like floss <laughs> like coming out of like, you know, little pieces here and there. And it, like at first I thought it was hay, it's not hay, but um, I think it's the linen part of it. And, um, so like, that's what I saw in this sweater. I so badly wish that it fit and it fit me in the body, but the arms were too tight. So I'm thinking, and it was like a little bit felted, which also told me that it was wool. Um, like it was felted like just right around the, the cuff. So it was like a, maybe a two thirds length sleeve and it was just tight. So that's why I didn't get it, but it was like $8 and I'm thinking, hmm, I could frog this or like I could just take off the sleeves and then maybe put new sleeves on or I don't know. I chickened out. I didn't do it. Didn't think I needed another project to do. So, but man, like it was so pretty and I'm thinking like, dang, how did this end up at a thrift store? <laughs> it was so pretty. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Anyways, this pink fizz sweater by Andrea Mowry. I'm really liking it a lot. There, every single row it's, is lace work, but you have chunks of stock net in there as well. So it helps to break it up. And like, after you do like one half of it, you kind of know the, the pattern. It's a little bit intuitive once you get going. It was not intuitive at the beginning. Like I was looking at every single square on that chart. <laughs> so it was not intuitive at the beginning. It is now. So. If you start, if you want to make the pink fizz sweater, I just recommend that you stick with it. It is worked bottom up um, and then you split for the sleeves. And I think it's a V-neck, V-neck top, scoop neck top. I'm not sure. I totally cannot remember now. It's been a while since I started it. Anyways. Okay. The last project that I want to share, and this is kind of a fun one. I saved this one for last on purpose because... I, I mean, every year, who doesn't say at this time of the year, okay, some people don't, but who doesn't say at this beginning of the year, like, I want to work down my stash. I'm not going to buy any yarn. Well, I'm not saying I'm not going to buy any yarn because I know myself and that's not going to hold. So, but I do want to be very, very intentional about working down some stash and different kinds of my stash as well. So, which is one of the reasons why I cast on this sock, this Felici yarn. I've had this yarn for years. I just haven't cast it on. It was just silly. Like I love the yarn and I'm always drawn. Like every time that Knit Picks has a Felici sale, I want to go and buy more yarn. I'm like, no, no, no. Cause I've had this yarn forever. So anyways, I'm totally rambling, but, <laughs> um, what I did is I took six project bags and six fingering weight, um, yarn skeins or kits or combinations, whatever it is. And gave everything to my husband. And I said, okay, I want you to put these in yarn bags. I'm like, this is, this is how these kits lay out. This goes with this. This is by itself. This is, you know, and it was, some of it was super deep, deep, uh, stash. Some of it was newer stash, but still stuff that I thought might just kind of sit for a little bit. Um, and again, I love, like, I love my stash. I love my stash. So like I would buy the things that have been sitting on my shelf. I would go and rebuy them at the store. I love my stash. 
So he did that and this was the first one that I opened and I'm not doing it like month to month. I'm just doing it as I finish one, I'm gonna open up the next. But this here yarn was in here. That's so pretty. And it's a Hue Loco colorway. It's like honey something. I don't really wanna take this out. Um, honey, it's just called honey. <laughs> so it's an 80-20 fingering weight yarn. I love this color. And I chose to do the, um, the Andrea Mowry Dre Renee Knits uh, everyday sock. My friend Annie loves this pattern and said, like swears by the Flegel heel that it is the best fitting heel that she's ever had. I like the shadow wrap heels and that's what I typically do. But um, I'm like, I just got to give it a try. I'm super curious. I need to give it a try. So like, the frustrating part is that like I cast on less stitches because it's a two by two rib the entire way. But I don't feel like for nine inch circulars that it works super great because I'm constantly having to like move those stitches around. Like I'd be, you'd be amazed at like that the four stitches that I didn't cast on because I cast on the 52 size and my normal go-to is a 56 and that four stitches is definitely making it a little cumbersome and it was even more cumbersome at the beginning when you know you're basically you're knitting and your your sock is like this you know um but it is toe up with a flegal heel and I don't think that there's really any cuff either. I think that it's just the two by two throughout the entire pattern, but we'll see. But I told my husband last night, I said, I think that this is just one of those patterns that I'm enjoying, but that I almost need to just pace myself on and you know, have that expectation, be like, hey, 10, row 10 rows of the sock today, and that's all I'm gonna do because the constant ribbing is a little bit tiresome on my hands. I am doing the, the um, combination or, I don't know, there's an, it might be like the Norwegian Pearl or, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's basically on your pearl stitches, you're purling clockwise. So normal, everyday knitting and purling, you wrap your yarn counterclockwise, and that sets up your stitches correct on the right side needle for the next round. Well, when you go clockwise, <laughs> it twists your stitch on the needle. And so when I get, and I only do that for my pearls, it's tightening things up so that the stitches between the knits and the pearls are not, don't have as much room to flare out, which is great. Um, but then um, you have to purl through the back loop because it's reversed, basically. I don't know if that totally makes sense. And I would try to show you, but I really don't think that you're gonna be able to see it. So anyways, I like the purl. It feels more ergonomic on my hands. I'm just not quite as efficient with it, but maybe after these socks, I will be. So I'm super excited about this and I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, so, and I chose not to take, this is not one that my husband put together. It was just something that I'm like, ah, I need a, I need a vanilla sock, so I'm gonna grab this. And I'm okay with that too, because it was also stashed, so. Okay. Let's talk dishcloths. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know if you guys are into reading, but if you are, my daughter got me this book for Christmas. I have read it when I was very, like, very new into knitting. It's called The Friday Night Knitting Club by Kate Jacobs. It's a, it's one of a few of her books. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's a fun read and it's something that I can relate to. It's um, set out of New York City. She's a local uh, yarn, she owns a yarn shop basically. Um, yeah, so it's just all about how their knitting club got started and 
I mean, it's all, all fictional, but it's super fun. I can relate to a lot of what's going on in this book, so it is a fun book. Totally recommend that. Okay. So let's talk dishcloths. So the next dishcloth that I am going to be working on, I am going to be using this yarn here. It is Friends Cotton, um, color one, two, three. I wanna say it's like charcoal or something like that. Maybe a midnight gray. I think it's charcoal. So this is um, by Hobby. 100% cotton yarn. It's 50 grams. Yeah. I love, I love this yarn. It is a fingering weight yarn. So it's 50 grams and 174 yards. Can't remember if I just said that or not. Okay, so I do not have a crochet pattern picked out yet or the yarn yet because I am doing it's turn it it's the knitting book turn <laughs> with my words okay so I picked out a new pattern the one that I did before was the broken rib and this one here is the broken basket weave here let me Sorry, it's a paid book, so I just don't wanna, just trying to be respectful of that, but broken basket weave. This one here is a two-star pattern, which means that it is a little bit more difficult. But um, yeah, I think that that one will be fun. I kind of wanted to do, I think it's zigzag, the zigzag pattern. Um, yeah, this is here. I kind of wanted to do that one. Um, and it's just knits and pearls, but I chose to go with the basket one because, what is it, the broken basket weave. And again, it's just knit and pearls. It's just a little bit more of a repetitive pattern. And that's kind of what I needed with my sweater pattern and my sock ribbing pattern. Um, I just kind of, I needed something a little bit easier. So, um, but yeah, that'll be this yarn in the basket weave. And I wanted the zigzag one. I have a beautiful, beautiful, like dark moody teal blue that I want to do for the zigzag stitch. So that one might be next month. We'll see where I'm at with the pink fizz sweater. But so this is for February's dishcloth, the first one. Um, I would love for you to join me. Again, you do not have to, to, to join the make along. You do not have to use this book. You do not have to use this yarn. You could use stash yarn. You could use a free pattern, paid for pattern, patterns that you already have. I do know that at a lot of libraries, these books are um, on the shelf. So that's how I first um, started looking at these books was at the library. I found them at a local yarn shop and then before I bought it, I checked it out at the library, loved it, and so I went ahead and bought it. And when I bought it on Amazon, I think this one pretty recently was like $9 or something, so pretty fun. Um, but yes, you do not, these are the books that I'm using that I chose to use. There are lots of free patterns out there. I love it when you guys use your stash. Um, Use anything you want, it doesn't matter. Some people are doing um, pot holders, which is dish cloth dish like, totally fine. Include that in the make along. Some people are doing coasters, totally fine. Dish cloth coaster, like anything small dish clothy like, add it in. This is a low key, low stress, just let's have fun dish cloth make along. So um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing for this one. If you are gonna do the same thing, let me know, cause it's so fun, you guys, to be um, working on the same projects and I love seeing your projects. So let me know if you guys are gonna work on it and if you're not working on that, what are you gonna work on? I'm super interested. I w I'm compiling free patterns, you guys, and I will do an episode on all the free patterns but I'm still compiling. There's so many fun ones out there, but I'm, I'll do knitting and crochet. So I, I might need to split the, the episode, but we'll see. Okay. I am going to pick a winner. I'll do it all off screen because I do it on my phone and I'm filming with my phone, 
but I will announce the winner down below. And this is what you're gonna win. Because it's almost February, we are doing this like, um, it's like a soft rose, like mauve kind of, heathered rose maybe, I forget what it's called, but it is Friends Yarn Color 58. It is a soft, mauve pink kind of color, along with, this is for my Valentine's update, some progress keepers to go with it. So these are great for crocheters and knitters alike. So if you crochet or if you are knitting, again, all of that is um, valid in the dishcloth make-along. It is, that's why it's not called a knit-along or a crochet-along, it's a make-along. If you weave and you're doing stuff, great. That's amazing as well. So, or if you sew, however, but. So that's what you guys will win. Congratulations, Susan Tobin. You won from your YouTube comment. I think it was on the original um, make along dishcloth information video on YouTube. And you were talking about knitting from your stash this year. Well, guess what? You get to add a new dishcloth yarn to your stash. So you had mentioned maybe wanting to try out the fingering weight yarn in your comment. So here's your chance. So excited for you. Um, good luck. That is it, you guys. Thank you so much. Congratulations to the winner. Really, really excited for you guys. And um, yeah, keep on making those dishcloths and getting them entered in. Bye, you guys.